Hello everyone, you're on SK Live. I'm your host, Indranil Basu. As always, today we have a very special guest, the former West Indian fast bowler, Mr. Tino Best. Hi, Tino. How are you? Welcome to SK Live. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm chilled to be a part of it, man, for sure. <laughs> well, really, really, really a pleasure having you on the show. How have you been? I mean, good. Um, you know, just staying fit. Um, you know, obviously around my little gym. Um, got my clients coming through training with me. Um, it's a big part of, of my of my life. Um, you know, strength and conditioning, fitness. So it's something that I always want to impact with people in terms of just being fit holistically. You know, just living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, that that you always did. And you know, uh, so how how is the uh, surrounding there? You're where are you right now? Yeah, I live in Barbados. I'm I'm Barbadian. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it's nice and warm. Is COVID is kind of like, you know, like put a real somber um, note on everyone in, in the world. So um, I think we are getting back a little bit normality in, in Barbados. You know, flights coming in and out now. Um, so everybody just got to, we got to live with this virus. So I think yeah. that everybody needs to just practice hygiene, um, you know, social distancing and, and just only come in contact when you have to. So I just hope that we can can learn how to live with it and, and just move on with our lives. So how have you been spending your time in, in this lockdown? Well, well, uh, for the first three months when it was really serious, um, I just stick to my routine. Um, I'm a very military-minded um, type of guy. Um, spent six years in the, in the Barbados Army, so it was oh. quite, it's kind of easy for me. Um, I just, just wake up in the morning, train, um, did my reading, um, train in the evening. You know, I just tried to eat clean. Um, when they allowed us to go to the supermarkets, just make sure that I... I was eating clean and, and not putting on any weight and not eating any junk food as well. So, you know, I'm just trying to, to continue to just keep my mind going in terms of like watching proper motivational stuff and just and just staying focused because at the end of the day, only the, the, the strong shall survive, you know. So I think holistically, I, 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 I actually enjoy lockdown, actually. Yeah, must be. And, and you know, I, I, I remember the way you ran in, you know, I, I really used to love your <laughs> run. You were just charging. You know, with so much of, uh, you know, uh, they, they say uh, bowling is all about physics and momentum is, is is equal to force into acceleration. And we saw so much of acceleration and force when you ran in. Yeah, I mean, I, I always try to play my every game like it's my last. Um, even if it's a club game, brother, I try to run in and bowl as quickly as possible because you never know who's watching. You never know who you can inspire. So I never yeah. play a game like lusterly, never play the game, you know, just being average. I just want to be the man out there that gave me my team everything so that I can go home and face myself in the mirror and, and say, you know, today, Tino, you give it your all. So that's something I always wear on my sleeve, just playing the game with the right path. Yeah, I, I missed the last part. You said about uh, playing the game with? With a lot of passion, just playing that game with full passion because you don't know when it's your last game. So I just try to play it as hard as I can every single opportunity I got. Absolutely, absolutely. This is, we, we saw it. And, you know, the <laughs> fact that you bowled so fast and then you retire. So how does it feel? I mean, when, when you can't bowl that fast as a fast bowler, as a retired fast bowler? I mean, I mean, I made peace for that a long time ago, brother. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you, you miss the game a lot. But but it's good to see the youngsters coming through. Um, the young West Indian fast bowlers, I'm really happy for them that, you know, Shamar Holder, Young Keon Hardy, and I would have had a couple of words with them, um, you know, in passing, you know, not a big conversation with them, but I think they're in terrific hands with Vasper Drakes and stuff. So I would, I am really proud of their progress um, being around the West Indies that have known. So, uh, I mean, I miss it for sure, but it's going to come to an end. And, you know, I, I just want to continue to just, how I can help any young cricketer, you know, in any way possible, just continue to just give good advice and, and keep encouraging them. If if do you know best uh, where to bowl today, so how much pace will you generate? Uh, well, I in the um the Masters League in India um if, in March at about 143 wasn't too bad about 88 89 miles an hour. Wow. So I haven't played cricket have a <laughs> I haven't played cricket in a whole year. So uh, I was always a very strong person like strong. I was always fit. So um, even though I wasn't playing cricket, I just needed maybe like one or two um, net sessions to just get the body going again and. I just get the adrenaline going. So that was real exciting uh, playing in India and in the Masters League. It's unfortunate that COVID happened. I thought it was a brilliant initiative. I just hope that uh, maybe in another year or so that we can start back and we can start back with the crowds because like, when we played in India, uh, West Indies Legends versus India, they had like 50,000 people in Wan Kelly. 
So just to see retired players. So that was kind of exciting for me. That was like, wow, I missed it. I actually sort of missed cricket again badly. But I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it was grateful given to me. And I, I tried my best. I, I tried my best and I can't fault myself, you know, for that. I, I give it my all. So how much hours do you put in every day even after retiring? It's a, it's a lesson for those who have retired. Just stay, stay fit. I mean, there is nothing better in life uh, to stay fit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's health, lifestyle, you know, you, you, if you eat clean and you, you train at least, you know, like I, I put in like cardio more. All my days basically set up is that on mornings I go, I do cardio. So I do like burpees, running, sprints. And then on evenings I will go with my weight. So I would say 40 minutes in the morning and then I'll all work in the evening with weight. So only all about 40 minutes a day, all the 24 hours, come on. Everybody yeah. should always try to find time to exercise, you know what I mean? So I was fortunate that I got a gym at home. That can be cool as well. They just pop downstairs and just gym, you know? so, and and it helped me as well. Um, when I was growing up a, a lot, like when I got disappointed or rejected, I always went to gym and took took that out in the gym. So what it did it was to help me get stronger, um, not only physically but mentally as well. You know, I remember you burst into the scene around 2010, and then you made your test debut, ODI debut a, a year later, and there was a bad phase when you got injured. Your back. Uh, yeah, hurt. yeah, not 2010, brother. 2002, 2003. Yeah, later, later, later on, yeah, I'm saying later on, of course, later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that um, when I when it first came into the West Indies, circuit back in 03. Um, I think in 2002, and we made a test team, and yeah. you know, um, remember I had a rough day in Australia. Um, that because. Do you know, I have to uh, you know, play against the mighty Australians, and then yeah. like, can you, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you right now. Yeah, I think. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Please. So, um, back in two thousand and, and, and three, um, back in two thousand and three, you know, just having the opportunity to play for West Indies was brilliant. Um, starting against the mighty Australians were tough, but yeah. I always thought that the, the surface was so slow. And it didn't really um, speak volume how quickly it could have bowled, but um, it was a, it was a good baptism <laughs> into international cricket. And it took me a whole year to get back in the team. Uh, after it took me a whole whole year, got back in the team, played. I was playing really well, and then I got that injury at um, at large in the first test, and it put me out for like eight months. So um, that was a good wake up call, also too, to just refocus myself in terms of getting even stronger. Um, with, my, with my whole body and stuff. And that's the first time I got coaching as well. Um, Wayne Daniel uh, was the first person who helped me with my bowling action. And I got coached when I was 23 years old. <laughs> After playing, well, I was in international grade for about two years. And the first time I got any help with my bowling was um, 2004, ironically. But always grateful for Wayne and what he's done for me and what he's done for my family in terms of um, helping me to get back to the level that I wanted to do so that I could have support my family through cricket, so I'm very thankful for him, for sure. You know, uh, it's it's sort of a uh, little unfortunate, uh, the kind of talent you had, the kind of pace you had, the, the kind of vigour you had on the field. Uh, you didn't play that many test matches for the West Indies. That is like... Yeah. Me. Yeah, I mean, it's disappointing because when you look back at it, I played 25 tests. <laughs> but um, you, you should have played, played certainly uh, close to something hundred or something. You know, kind of. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I mean, as far as a hundred, <laughs> I think I, I would have been fifty test matches. I think I was good enough to play fifty tests. But you know how everything, the selection policy, um, you know, the cricket. Um, you know, I was in and out the team. Sometimes when I met the team, um, you know, I was sitting on the bench for three and four games. Sometimes that's a five. A whole series sometimes just sitting on just on the bench and it was demoralizing but it was also like i was grateful to be around the team you know i was always thankful to be a west indian cricketer um yeah. i i knew i wasn't a malcolm marshall or a courtney walsh i was only a tino best and i i tried my best to be the best tino best i could i could have been and i think i've been the best Tino best that i i could have so um it, it, it is disappointing i didn't play more but i'm not ungrateful I, I, it's all about being thankful uh, uh, gratitude for, for wearing um, the maroon cap. So I, I have no regrets, man. You know, Tino Best gave his best on the field. That's that's what everyone remembers. 
Like, absolutely, man. Just give it all every day, day in, day out, you know, until that day to tell you that, thank you. Um, you're not going to be selected for this tour. Then you say to yourself, you know, you're a little disappointed, but you say, you know what? Looking back on it, I was given a wonderful opportunity and it made the best of it. You know, uh, in 2008, I remember uh, uh, ICL happened. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember in, in 2008, you know, my agent at the time called me and said, yo, um, Brian Lara, all those guys. And, you know, it was it was it wasn't like um I was disappointed to go. Um I, I was up I wasn't getting a play from West Indies to be honest. Um I, I wasn't in the test setup. I didn't have a retain it was a no brainer. Uh, you know, a trade on the India place from twenty twenty. And just I just found brother. Um it was all about just looking after my family with my talent and you know, it, it happened, the league collapsed and unfortunately I never played in IPL. And that's something that to this day, you know, um it always kinda haunt me because I always thought I was I was I was good enough to play IPL. So it's kind of unfortunate I didn't get to play IPL. Uh, that's the only thing that on the world stage that I am disappointed about not having the opportunity to play in the IPL. And you know that that's just life, you know. And you know you you live and you learn, you know. And so at the end of the day, you know, I made a I wouldn't say it was a mistake um, by going because we are we are cricketers. We gotta feed our family. Yes. Uh, but you know, at, at the end of the day, I would have loved to to for ICL to be sanctioned. And so that we could have gone from strength to strength, and it would have been the Indian Cricket League um, rather than the, uh, the Indian Premier League, you know. But I, I honestly believe that the IPL is a brilliant machine. Um, the way how it's played, the excitement from the crowd, the people, the players, and it helped Indian cricket to, to, to blossom. And Indian cricket has 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 benefited tremendously. Um, they're the number one bowling team in the world. If you really look at it, is is India? I think uh, no, Australia, India, West Indies, something like that. But at the end of the day, who would have thought that that's the best bowlers in the world because of the pitches, the nature of the pitches um, in India. So it's really helped Indian cricket tremendously. And, and all I can say is kudos to India. Well done. Yeah, and it, IPL also helped the West Indies cricket a lot because after IPL happened, how many times West Indies became the champion in World T20? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it helped our, our T20 game, but it didn't really help our test game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah, I mean we are we are, we are double champions in, in world T Twenty cricket. Um, you know T Twenty was tailor made for West Indians. Um, quick bowling, hard hitting, easy feeling. You know what? West Indian people are are in terms of the athletic ability. So um, at the end of the day, Twenty is tailor made for, for for our guys. So I think it's something that comes dominant. I mean. You, Pick a T20 cricketer anytime in the Caribbean, he would do well for your franchise. So um, that's one thing we can say about West Indian cricketers: we are very flamboyant, we are very confident, and you know we are, we are winners. Did, did you did you find any trouble uh, coming back to the uh, international team, your West Indies team, after you played ICL? Did you have any problem with the cricket board then? Because no, no, not at all. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I never had any stress to be honest. Um, by the time, by the time um, ICL was 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 abandoned, um, I was actually still playing for Barbados. And yeah. the next year, I was back in the West Indies team for that year. So it was never a case of, um, of 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 my board giving me any trouble. What what I tell you is that I was unfit. <laughs> I was really unfit from just playing twenty twenty cricket. I wasn't conditioned. Um, so when I got um, called back to the test team um, to to play two test matches against Bangladesh. I'm only got like maybe like two or three wickets in that series, and I was real unfit because I was just playing 2020 cricket. So I always told myself from that day I was never going to be be caught um, lagging in terms of not being fit consistently year round, day in day out. So that was a real weird cup call in terms of like you know wanting my career to start back over. And it took me another three years to get back in the team, and you know it was hard work, but I got back in the, my first game back in the team. I scored in 95, and I got two for 30, and I got one. In the match, so that yeah. was that was a real incredible comeback for me from a personal standpoint. Knowing that I was I was I was out the team for a whole three years, and you know everyone had written me off. You know people saw me and say you know you were never met the team, and I just I just used the negativity to just fuel um, uh, my 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 mindset in terms of just keeping that channel that that channel um, uh, tunnel vision sorry 
they're trying to channel myself into that yeah. tunnel of, of, of being focused consistently. So um, I think in, in, in life, everything happens for a reason. Um, you should always learn from your mistakes. And, and that's just life. Life is life. Life goes on. You know, I, I beg your pardon. Initially, I said it was 2010 you made your impact. <laughs> it was 2002, 2003 you made your debut. But 2010, yeah. you know, playing the counties uh, for Yorkshire, I think. Yorkshire. You signed up with, with, with I, I can't recall the exact. Was it Yorkshire? Yeah. 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 So that also helped. Yeah. That also helped. Yeah, Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That also helped your cricket. I don't, I don't think, uh, yeah, for, I think it helped my cricket with, with, in terms of professionalism. Um, playing at Yorkshire took my, my, my professionalism to a different level. Um, what, what it did was just try to keep me as focused as possible and, and stuff. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Yorkshire. I have nothing bad to say about that club. And it was, it was, it was, it was good. Uh, it was good to me. I had maybe one incident um, with one of the coaches just into me. Um, I think I didn't high five him. And he told me that, you know, he would send me back on the next plane to Barbados. You know, obviously at the point in time, I told him, you know, um, I lived in Barbados and, and you know, I, as we know, that was a racial slur, but I mean, apart from that, I thought that the people at Yorkshire treated me beautifully, I have nothing to say bad about those people. Those are some incredible human beings. And, you know, one person that I, I single out um, that treated me with so much love, like if it was her son, was um, Johnny Burstow's mother, um, Janet Burstow. Um, she made sure that I was always comfortable, uh, made sure that I was, I knew everything that was going on around me. and. I ask, I, I hope that God continue to bless her and her beautiful family. I'm so happy that Johnny Burstow has gone on to do great things for England because at the end of the day, I had a lot of respect for that family. So I had a good time in Yorkshire. And apart from the one indiscretion, um, I thought that the people treated me beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. You know, good people always get uh, good treatment. But uh, do you know what, what you're doing right now? You do commentary and your favorite things, uh, that word you say, bring ball. I mean, you have to tell us about that also. But what you're doing right now, apart from doing commentary? Yeah, I mean, apart from doing commentary, obviously, as I said, you know, at the beginning, it's, it's all about personal fitness. Um, you know, I studied to be a personal trainer. Um, that is my biggest passion, to be honest. Um, you know, just trying to be a strength and conditioning bowling coach. Um, just trying to, to, to impact young cricketers and, and people holistically to just live a healthier lifestyle and stuff. And, you know, the amount of um, knowledge that I've, I've collected over the years from different coaches, um, different trainers and stuff, have so much to offer so i just waiting for opportunity to be given to to just elaborate and, and just share that knowledge um commentary i love commentary but as you know uh, <laughs> remember you said that you like the phrase bring balls uh bring, bring ball, balls is, yeah. yeah bring ball <laughs> bring balls can is kind of like can, can you tell the tell the viewers what, what it means i mean what why you say yeah that? yeah i mean like um i was uh many ball get strikes um struck out the ground you know, yeah. bring balls mean like the umpire comes up with like six new balls. So when it, a ball get lost, I used yeah. to like to say, you know, bring balls, bring balls, Mr. Empire, bring balls. So that was a major terminology, you know, it's a, it's a terminology that we use here on the island. Um, you know, broken English. I mean, so it sounds really funny, bring balls. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I love commentary. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I love the game of cricket. And it's given me so much. It's made me... Um, meet so many people of different races, nationalities, religions all over the world. That's why I got so much love for everyone who got love for everybody, you know. So cricket is a real humbler for me. And, you know, i just grateful that I was given the opportunity to, to travel the world for free and, and just play, you know what I mean? No, I, I, and I'm uh, sure Jeffrey Archer would be happy uh, listening to this. That you're going to get into strengthening, uh, you know, and, 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 and bowling. Uh, as a bowling coach, you'll be getting there as well. Oh, no. The, the whole Archer thing was just blown out of proportion. Um, I, to be honest, um, when I when I tweeted, it was all about how he was bowling in the first innings. I just thought that in the first innings of the game, he didn't play in as much effort that I, I, I saw from Mark Wood and Jimmy Addison. I thought he was just going through emotions a little bit. And I mean, like, I am here in Barbados. I didn't expect him to replay. You know, so I, I, I my first tweet was, you know, he's bowling, a, he's bowling military medium. And he can move faster than that. And, you know, you've got, Bro you got um, Wood as absolutely steaming in every ball. And then you had him just being a little nostalgic in terms of his approach. And he replied and said, you know, with all this knowledge, you should be a coach. And the whole world, the whole world figure was at war. I was like, wow. But, I mean, I replied, you know, I replied like, yo, um, you know, don't attack me personally. Like, you're bowling too fast as in, like, you're bowling slow. It wasn't like, I wasn't trying to disrespect him in any way. But I thought that he, he, he just kind of, like, 
Uh, he's in the middle of a test match. I don't think that he should have replayed. You know what I mean? I think he should have keep it very professional and just let it let it rain. I mean, when you're young, um, I had the same problem when I was young. I mean, replaying to everyone that said something to me. And the older you get, you realize that you can't fight every battle. You got to choose battles. And you know, at the end of the day, it was a cricket that get blow into a personal situation. And I was like, whoa, that's not what I, you know, um, you know, this young man at the end of the day, you know, he's young. So I I, I really am, I, I know he's a big talent. And then a few days later to see everything that happened, um, you know, with him and stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I hope he learns from his experience and, and God bless him and, and bless his family. And, and he could go on to, to, he could come back from this and be a, a great cricketer and show the world what he can really do once again. Like, you know, cricket has evolved so much over the years. You know, we, we hear about stories in 70s, 80s without helmets. You know, pitches were not covered. There were not many guards on your body. Now everything is covered. And, you know, is, is pace, uh, raw pace really matters in, in world cricket today? Um, yes, it does. Yeah, sure. Um, pace is something you can't coach. Um, you got to unleash it. You know, you yeah. can't restrain it. You know, anytime that you're bowling quick, let the person bowl quick. Um, what is important about bowling quick is recovery, rest and recovery. I find that most young bowlers who bowl quickly, they, they are disciplined enough to like drinking, cut out partying, cut out girls. It's something that, um, you know, that I would mind, but as I got older, I kind of like stop because it takes away from, from, from your emphasis in terms of strength and going hard every game. So you got to be disciplined not only on the field, but also in your personal life in terms of just like say no, you know, sometimes the guys might want to go on a Friday night uh, to have some drinks and you know, yeah. you got cricket the whole weekend. You got to be able to say, guys, I can check you guys on Sunday night, man. I, I want to be fit and ready for these two games um, this weekend. So um, I think the most important thing about life is it just being disciplined. I think once you can be disciplined, I think that you're going to be a winner, you know, and you're going to be a champion, but you have to be disciplined. It's, it takes a serious mindset. And I think that at the end of the day, you only got 10 years in this game, brother. And if you can't be disciplined for 10 years, I don't think that you you, you will live a good life after cricket because you're going to always be regretting what you didn't do um, when you were playing. So at the end of the day, you know, I, that's my view on for young cricketers. Um, you know, just every time you get that cricket ball, that rock in your hand, just running the ball as quickly as possible. If you're a seam bowler, try to seam it as much as possible. Swing the ball. If you're a batsman, score runs because... This is your opportunity. This is your moment. And you got to keep um, working your butt off and maintaining and play because someone is always there knocking at the door, wanting your play. So at the end of the day, small window, 10 years. If you're good, you get 12. And, you know, if you're great, like Sasha, you get 17. If you're like Larry, you get 20. So you got you got you got you got to be great. And I think, I think, I think Sasha played, what, 24 years, I think? Uh, am I right? Yes, 24, yeah. yeah. So if, you, if, if you're phenomenal, like, 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 Sasha, you play 24, Lara played 18, Fifth played 20, like, you've got to be, so every day you've got to go hard and, and enjoy the game. So, um, you know, just humble yourself and, you know, just respect the game of cricket because you've just got a little bit of time to, to, to be great. Do you know, you know, people are writing that we look like brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I, you're, I, be you're better I, looking. <laughs> yeah, you have, and I take it as a compliment, really. Yeah, you're better looking. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're fitter looking, you're better looking. Whatever. <laughs> who, who was your childhood hero? I mean, when you started off. I To, to be honest, I have so much people that, like, I, I love cricketers. I mean, I love the game, but I, I think I had, like, my biggest hero, my number one hero to this day, um, is my uncle, Carly Bass. Um, just to, to, to live in a house with him. Uh, or have him as a family member, share the same surname as him, Bass. I, I, I freaked out. I, I, I remember my, when I first meet people, I always ask them, do you know who Carly Bess is? And they would go like, yeah. I said, that's my uncle. Uh, people would laugh. Like, that was my introduction. Um, when I was like five, six, seven, eight years old, um, I would always introduce myself as Carly Bess's nephew um, because I felt a, a, a sense of pride. I, I, I felt happy. And then when I, when I, when I saw Brian Lara, um, um, I met Brian Lara when I was a kid. Um, he was around my family, like probably 88. He came to play um Cigar Few Strawberries tournament. And he and my uncle um, became good friends. And Brian Lara, is, it will be my number two in terms of just like um, greatness, like 
phenomenal. Uh, growing yeah. up as a teenager, Barilar is like, you know, for us on this part of the world, is like how Sashin is for you guys. You know, he, he was he was a, a, a legend, a great man. A, his back, his, his, his back leg, the way his clothes fit him. Uh, Brian Lara was like one of the greatest people that, you know, I always wanted to play cricket with Brian Lara. I mean, I know my uncle was a lot older than me, but my dream to play in the West Indies with Brian Lara, and, and, and I did it, you know. So at the end of the day, you know, success is relative, you know, and, yeah. and to play with, with, with people like Lara, play against Sachin Tendukar, is something I could tell my grandkids, you know, and, and something I can always feel proud of myself with. But I think those two were massive for me. Um, Ambrose and Walsh, for sure. Um, that whole West Indian team of the 80s, Sir Vivian Richards, um, just the way that we went about uh, playing cricket, Sir Clive Lloyd, um, you know, and then when we were in primary school, um, we would have the books. And we would always watch about the three Ws and Sir Garfield Sobers and stuff. So being a Barbadian, it was so much rich heritage in terms of producing amazing, amazing, amazing cricketers. So you had a big legacy to look up to. So as, as a young man growing up, I mean, I, I, I had so many cricketers to draw from. And then you had guys that who didn't wait on to play for West Indies who were excellent first class cricketers. And you would be like, whoa. Then you had really good club cricketers because they say you can find a, a, a great cricketer at any corner shop in Barbados, brother. That's how talented Barbadians are. Like I could talk about Barbados. Like we got the most test cricketers per square mile in the world. In terms of like Australia and England, like we have produced like well, I think three hundred and um, maybe twenty people now have represented West Indies, and I think other than that, we got like Barbados have produced like maybe a hundred and twenty-five or something crazy like that. Like so, I got one in my family. Um, there's one in my neighborhood, Dwayne Smith, just like right up by the street. <laughs> so there's like we always produce very good athletes, good sports people. So that's something that I always had to look up to, not only but from my uncle, but in my neighborhood as well. So I had a lot of heroes and a lot of people to look up to, to be honest. Like, um, a guy that you probably would never heard about, uh, a guy called Glenn Roy Corbin, who was one of the best cricketers and footballers in my neighborhood, and somebody that every young person in the neighborhood. So I had a lot of role models. You know, it's something that we say in Barbados that my mom always said. She said, you got one mother, but you got many fathers, meaning that you got so many good men to look up to in terms of who you want to be. So I was very blessed. Um, to, to, to live in Barbados and to, to, to rub shoulders with some amazing human beings. Now, do you know who's, who's, who's uh, bigger in terms of uh, Scott's achievement and in, in, in terms of impact on the field, Sachin Tendulkar or Brian Lara? Uh, both. Uh, I can't pick one or the other. Um, what Sachin has done for, for people of India is absolutely astounding. What Brian Lara has done um, for the people of the Caribbean is truly astounding. And when you mush when you mush two legends of the game together, I don't think it's a is 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 who's the best or who is. I think what they have, have given to the people of the world in terms of cricket is something that we probably will never see. It's like Ronaldo and, and Messi, which one you're gonna want to choose. They're always gonna have a debate. So I think there's always gonna be a debate between Lara and, and Tendukar. So I would never really say Brian is better than Sachin or Sachin is better than, than Brian because they're just amazing, you know, they're just amazing cricketers and amazing human beings as well. Um, you know, I, I interacted with them on, on, a, on a personal level as well. And they always, they always, when I speak to them, they always give me that sense of confidence and, and a sense of, 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 of knowing, um, um, of knowing what I want to achieve in life. So I got nothing but love and admiration for both of them. So I don't think one is better than the other or, or so forth, so forth. I just think they are just two great human beings. You know, talk about admiration. You know, cricket is is best viewed when it's it's in whites. We, we Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and uh, so you know, uh, so much of T Twenty uh, ODI cricket happening, shorter formats taking over. So, how do you see the future of Test cricket? I mean, shaping up in in years to come. I think I think that Test cricket is okay, going to be okay. You know, I think that the purest form of the game, you cannot get rid of it. You know, you got to stay to it. Um, Jason Holder made a comment. Um, I'm paraphrasing here. I'm not. I stand to be corrected. Um, I think the, the ICC needs to to make a a a, a wage or a, a a payment that all international cricketers can look forward to. Like I think every Test match should be twenty thousand US or twenty thousand pounds for every for every team. 
I think that's the only way that we are going to kind of compete against the the, 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 the 2020 leagues around the world. Because if you got a young fast bowler um, who's bowling 92 miles an hour, and he got a ball 92 miles an hour um, for two innings, um, 30 overs um, over that game, uh, and then he's playing 2020 for four overs and he's getting a million dollars. How do you change that narrative? How do you you change his attitude? But yeah. understanding that we got to start with the, the grassroots in terms of the young cricketers and let them know, understand that test cricket is the ultimate. 2020 is just the I thing. And, and if you don't play test cricket, you're going to drop your intrinsic value lower. So we, that's the attitude. If you don't play international cricket for your country, I don't think that the T20 league should, should sign you. You know what I mean? That, that's my honest opinion. That's why I think we're going to get around. Because you want the best, you want superstars to play test cricket and you do want your superstars to play 2020. But I also believe that 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 test cricket is the ultimate. You gotta you gotta want to uh, represent your country, and and I don't think that nothing should stop you. Not even money. Um, money comes and goes, brother. And you know your legacy. Uh, I remember. Do you want to play nine hundred T twenty games, or do you want to play a hundred test matches? I you know what I mean? Like yeah. So I had this I had this conversation with Herschel Gibbs, and and Herschel was like, um, there's no way that I could feel happy playing seven hundred and fifty T twenty games. Um, in, instead of playing a hundred test matches, there's no way that I could feel comfortable with that. And, and playing it in front of a sellout crowd at Lords or MCG in a test match. Are you kidding me? There's no T20 performance. There's no T20 uh, admiration that you can give me that can make me feel better than playing uh, in front of full house at the MCG. Are you kidding me? No, no chance. Or full house in Sabina, Jamaica, or Kensington Oval in Barbados, or Wan Kelly, like playing in, in Sachin's last test. Like that was one of the most electrifying times of my life because the crowd booed me. It was amazing. You know, they said Tino sucks. I loved it. And I, I put my namaste and they just screamed out like, yeah, like I love that. Like, so I always got this love and admiration for India. That's why I was so disappointed. I never get to play in the IPL. So because I always love Indians, always love Indian cricket, the, the energy, the vibe, you know, like what makes me laugh is even like on social media, when they when they're going out, then they're going to defend their players or they it, it's just funny to read the comments like these people are really into their cricket. Um and I love it. I love people who speak their mind and anyone who doesn't speak their mind, I I, I back off, you know. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel and we can move forward, you know. So that that's one thing I love and test cricket can never die. The purest form. It shows you it separate the men from the boys. And, yeah. and if you're a boy, test cricket is not for you. Go and play little games, which is T20. But test cricket is for men. And men of good character and good men of good heart. So yeah. so test cricket will always be my favorite forever and ever. In fact, I, I found it quite ridiculous to reduce test cricket to a four-day affair. I mean, how, what was your thought when you heard first time that there are suggestions? Um, yeah, that's suggestion. No, don't, don't try to tweak anything. Don't. Yeah. Keep the game as pure. Um, five days is five days. Uh, a whole week. I never even look at cricket like playing cricket. When I was playing test cricket, I never looked at test cricket like a whole week. I always look at it like just, just days, just first day, second day, third day, and then I would remember, oh, what today is this? What today is Friday? I said, where today is Friday? Oh wow, because I was so like, you're so in tune with the game. So it it, it was kind of like amazing for me in terms of like, yo, I, I never worried about. Uh, five days of a test match. I loved it. The anxiety, you know, the the pain, the soreness, the stiffness. Uh, knowing that you bowl the first innings and you bowl twenty two overs, but you gotta come back in the second innings and give fifteen strong overs because you need the team need you. Um, that is test cricket for me. Like for instance, I gave you three. Um, in two thousand and twelve, um, we we're playing against Bangladesh. Um, in Kunla, Kunla is the, to me like the flattest wicket ever. Yeah. And the match before, I got five for twenty four. Uh, won the game for West Indies. Like I thought, I bowled quick in, in Dhaka. Like um, the umpire, I, um, I think uh, I'm trying to remember the umpire. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, he's one of my favorite international umpires as well. Nice fella. If you were going to look back to that test match, can't remember his name. And he said, "Wow, that was one of the quickest times I've ever seen anyone bowl in the subcontinent." But what happened in the first innings of that test match? I got one wicket for like 90. And Sakli Mushtaq said to me, you're going to get your rewards, brother. You went, you you, you charged in every single ball 
in that yeah. first innings. I think Bangladesh, we made 500. Bangladesh scored, uh, I think, 500. And then we ended up giving them like 280, 260 to win. Uh, we bowled them out for like 200. We won the game easily. I got five for 24. And then the second test, um, I started off the first innings good. And they pulled my hamstring. And I was like, oh, man, man, like, now that I bowled in so well, I pick up an injury. Like, I don't get injuries. I remember the that in this game, we were a bit behind the eight ball. I tell Darren Samuel, look, brother, don't worry. I just need some injections. I have in my hamstring, and I ran out. I bowled on one leg. I got six wickets for 40 runs. They said a tiger is most dangerous when he's, when he's limping. So I guess it was fierce. I got six for 40. And that's something that I, I, I love because I was injured. And because of the love of the game and the love of test cricket, I just bowled on one leg and, and bowled my best. So at the end of the day, when I'm looking back on my career, I have some really good times and I, I feel proud of myself because I came through so much adversity. And, and, and that's, that is what test cricket is about. It's about building character. It's about building that charisma. It's about letting you know that life, one day the sun can be shining bright for you in the first innings. And then you've got a thunderstorm in the second innings. But how are you able to bounce back from that thunderstorm? Is what's going to signify you as a great man. And that's why I love test cricket. Absolutely, you know, they, they, you've explained it so well, so articulately. <laughs> people, people even spoke a lot about uh, the, you know, saliva. Not uh, you can't use saliva, you know, at, at the time of the Corona pen, pandemic and things like that. But it, it's happening so smoothly. I mean, we're seeing. You must be a proud uh, uh, West Indian uh, to see the way West Indies uh, uh, have played in Southampton, beaten England by four wickets. So. You know, I mean, saliva wasn't a factor at all. I mean, they still moved the ball. Jason Holder still got those wickets. And uh, uh, even uh, Gabriel got those, you know, nine wickets in the match. You know, everything happened. So, there's no problem with the fast bowlers, isn't it? No, nah, not at all. I, the only thing I got wrong is that the quick change wrong. Uh, when you play the test match, you got to give the guys at least a week off. <laughs> because <laughs> test again, like, I could, I could tell you this here, brother. Um, like when you done play a test match, like we said, the test match finish on a Monday, and you go to play a Thursday. Oh my God! Like you, you five years old after every test match, so you need your your ice baths, you need your massage, and the quick turn around is just just speaking uh, volumes of the character. You thank God you fall in Manchester that the bowlers can get some more as well because the third test is a quick turn around again. So look, you got a short window, as I said. To play this game and you've got to give it your all so that means that your strength and your conditioning and your fitness has to be up top draw in order to continue to day in day out you've got to love the game and 2020 as i said it's like i you sitting on the kit um you don't have to be super fit you don't have to bowl a lot of spells and, and stuff so test cricket is just man's cricket i call it big boy cricket man's cricket you know, I think T20 is little boys cricket, like fast food. But test cricket is main. That's where men are made in the test arena. Absolutely. And what a sight, you know. I mean, a fast bowler charging in and uh, the overcast condition, ball moving, seeming around. It can't get better than that, you know, the sight of, of watching test cricket. But it wasn't a good sight seeing a, a giant fast bowler like uh, uh, Michael Holding, you know, uh, <laughs> breaking down like that. I mean, what was that? I mean, you, you've been in, in Barbados, you've traveled all over the West Indies, in all the islands. Uh, what exactly is that? It's, I mean, there is, there is a lot of talk about uh, uh, racial uh, discrimination, things. We, 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 it doesn't matter much to us. But how is it over there? I mean, what was that? What was your thought when you saw him, uh, you know, uh, breaking down like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was good because at the end of the day, we go through a lot as people of color. Uh, and and that, that is the truth. Um, you know, as I said earlier, a coach at York just said to me, you know, like, he was sending me back on the, on the next flight, you know what I mean? But um, it's something that we got to live with. And I, I, I think that we need to educate ourselves, um, not only people of color, but also Cascadian people. Um, the whole world needs to educate itself about, about um, discrimination at any level, the injustice anywhere, the injustice everywhere. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, I think that we need to, to understand each other. Um, give each other time to to listen. I think that a lot of time people don't listen to people. I think that they just make up their own assumptions and go along with it. I think that's the world. Um, nobody wants to listen to you or wants to hear your side of the story. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, looking at America and what is going on in America, 
and you hear the, 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 the Americans, the white Americans say, you know, you all are conquered people and, and stuff. But yeah, we, we, we do accept that the situation that slavery happened. But at the end of the day, the story of the conquered needs to be heard as well. I'm um, not the only the story of the victors. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I got love for who got love for, for all. And, you know, and at the end of the day, when people interact with me, I always try to show them love. Uh, I remember the time there was a story, know that we are on it and we are on it on, 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 on this beautiful um, um, website, uh, streaming. I remember I was playing a game at Kensington Oval um, for, for St. Lucia Zooks. And they're playing against uh, Barbados Traders. I'm a Barbadian. Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and um, me, me and um, Shoy Malik, we, we got into a little tussle, and you know, uh, 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 um, I remember we we exchanged some words, and got me. but I remember some people were saying, "Oh, you call him, um, you call him some stupid um, Shoy Malik is a person like me. You're, you're I call him. Sorry, Can you hear me now? You're breaking up a little. Yeah, now you're all right. Yeah. Go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was. I was playing this game in, in the CPL, and um, I'm playing against Barbados Stridents for St. Lucia Zooks, and I was. I, I was bowling. Um. You know, sure. Malik hit me for two fours, and then I got him out, and then I just said, you know, go inside, and I said the C word. You know what the C word is? You know, the C word. I just. I just said the C word, and and then when I got when I got home, everybody was saying, oh, um. His wife said that you you racially abused him. And I was like, what? So I had to I had to clear the air and say, you know, the C word is not a racial slur. You know, anybody can be a C. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, people is always trying to make up a lot of stories about you and tell a lot of lies as well. So uh, me and she ended up playing two years later together. And there was no issue. There's always respect. Because when you're out there in the heat of the you know, you say things, but I never go down the lines of of, of being racial disrespectful to even if I'm playing and with white guys, I, I don't try to disrespect them. I try to do let the ball do the If anyone has ever said anything like that, it, it's totally totally wrong. But, um, I love cricketers. I love to play the game strong and hard. And whenever cricket is finished, I hope that we can have a drink after without any hard feelings. Because it's just a sport. It's not life and death. Um, only when you're out there in the middle. <laughs> but when we when we when we are finished playing, you know, it's love. It's it's all love. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to clear the air on that. So what is the C word? Ah, the C word is um the C. You don't know what the C word is? No, I know. <laughs> uh, the the C word is the word you don't you don't use. <laughs> but we, in, we use it. We use this word like normal, a verb, adjective, a pronoun, a noun, plural, singular. We just use it loosely. Um, you know, is it, it's talking about a, a, a cat, a pussy cat, uh, but the c word for the pussy cat. <laughs> okay. So that's okay. the best way I can put it. Um, it produce, it put, it produces life. It give us all life. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, man, it just in the heat of the battle. It just in the heat of the battle. You say stuff, but you never cross that line. And that is something that I, I, I always um, was happy for myself not to do. Um, you know, you would just say a couple of words, they go back to you, and say a couple of words, and. You keep it very professional. You don't try to cross that um, that line about telling people about their family, um, where they come from, and stuff. That was never my game. I never liked it. I never appreciated anyone who used it um, to try to as as a as a mental tool in the game or anything. If you're gonna talk, if you're gonna sl sledge, you sledge in the context of the game, not outside of the game or what someone color is, uh, who their wife is, who they pray to. You know me. You know at the end of the day, who is me to judge anybody who they pray to who they love or anything. I am just a normal human being. And then in a in hundred years, me and Europe bones, the dust from our bones will not even be here. So life is life. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't take it too serious. None of us get out alive. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> now, have you ever been uh, uh, racially abused in you know, playing days? Uh, you went all over the world playing you know, in, in England, in Australia, in India, any, any place, uh, Bangladesh, I think I, I think I think I uh, think to be honest, not on the international level, um, not on the international level at all. Um, I think when they're playing club, um, guys will just say to you all the time, um, "F off back to to your country and stuff." But they never really like came and say, you know, that you 
about my about my skin color or anything. They always say, you know, you should go back to your country. Um, and that was their way of being disrespectful. So that was racially abused like that, but not yeah. directly like saying like, yo, use a, a, a brown person, you should think. They always use it very smartly. But I didn't have a problem with it. Um, I just let the ball do the talking, uh, broke a couple of arms uh, yeah. and stuff. So um, whoever had to get the front of, of, of it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I got love for everyone. Um, and, and, and that's life. I remember the time um, me and Darren Sammy was speeding on the highway. I get this joke. <laughs> me and Darren Sammy, two West <laughs> Indians racing. We were playing for Hampshire. Um, so this is like four years ago. Yeah. And we are racing to, uh, we, are, we are driving from Kent to, to the Oval. So we leave a, a, a T20 game. We're heading to another T20 game. And we are racing because, you know, we're racing. And the police pulled us over. And when the police came, he said, I know you guys. Tino <laughs> Best and Darry Sammy. I was like, yeah, no ticket. So, you know what I mean? So they say, do you guys go? I said, yeah, we're going to the game. It's like, okay, um, just, just go in the middle lane. Don't, don't speed too much. And he was like, thank you, thank you. So that, I mean, like, that could have gone a lot different for somebody else. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's why I say that at the end of the day, sports has unified people so much, and especially if you're, like, a, a popular sportsman. Um, not that you get away with, with doing something wrong, but there's a, there's, there's a, a sense of respect, uh, or understanding between um, brown people, white people, black people, whatever, uh, once you're an athlete. And it's something that I always say that sports shouldn't be used as a political tool but sometimes it, it, it is used as it. But I don't see, when I'm playing sports, I just see talent. I don't care if the person is whatever. I just see talent, and I love talent. So when it comes to po uh, political stuff, I, I'm not a politician. So I leave that for the politicians. I leave that for the politically correct people. But when it comes to sports, I just love to see good athletes. Don't color where they come from, um, where they, what country they represent, who God they pray to. I just love to see talent, and I love talent. I love talented people, no matter if they're a boy or a girl or whatever, trans. It doesn't matter to me. Talent is talent. Uh, talking about sport, you know, I mean, we Indians, uh, uh, you played against the Indian team a lot. I mean, which which Indian uh, batsman really impressed with, with his technique, you know, as, as a bowler when, when you played? And when you see them, are they, are they good against fast bowling, the Indian batsmen? Yeah, I mean, you guys are very good. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I played against India. Um, the first time I played against India was in the India Oil Cup in 2005. And the first time I bought at Raul Dravid, that, that was an experience. He hit me for three bat about fours. Um, that was an experience. I remember after the game, um, for the, you know, he had a nice discussion with me. Um, young man, never stop running. I love your energy. Keep charging it. Don't, just because you get hit for fours, don't stop. Just keep keep charging and, and I thought that was very humble and sweet of him. So I've always had a lot of love for the Indian cricketers. Yuvraj gave me a bat at the time and I was like, that was so cool of him as well. Like, you know, so, um, you know, from my experiences with the Indian cricketers, um, you know, always being nice. I mean, I don't have any problem with people in international cricket. I always thought that they, that we were always cool. Um, you know, guys, you're, you're breaking up situations or with certain people. We all know that. It's, 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 sorry, can you, no, no, your your voice is breaking up a little. Tino, oh, yeah. Can you hear me good? Am I good? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so good. so playing Yeah, so playing against India, you know, Raul Dravin and those guys were always very nice and, and polite to us. And they didn't act like um they have one point five billion people supporting them. They were very humble people and, and that is something I admire um about about the Indian cricketers. Um, you know, I never had any bad energy, bad fight with any of them. They always show respect they always showed um love for the game and, and that is something i love um, i remember it was in the gym uh, and um i think that was back in 2016 i think we were in dubai and, and you know and and um, and my boy viru uh cy um he came in and he saw yo bro you're still going hard i love that so those are things that you know that made me feel good that you know for industry why he acknowledges that you know he's a hard worker and, and i love the game and you know he said to me you know you should get into to, to strength and conditioning and coach some fast motors, we might need you. And it's like, yeah, man, that's the dream. So, so you know, FC Wag is, is, is listening. I need a job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, your dream to be in the IPL will happen one day. And, you know, it's it's also uh, so 
uh, heartening to see that Indian Indian uh, market, you know, contributing so much to world cricket. And uh, but you know, then there there were things like you know the in, at the ICC we saw the big three formula coming in because the fact that India contributes so much to world cricket, uh, they wanted to restrict to three four countries playing Test cricket. And, uh, all kinds of cricket, you know. I uh, don't you think cricket should grow also, and we should have uh, a lot of lot of uh, lot of leaders coming into ICC to ensure they take cricket to that next level. Don't you think we should do that? Yeah, for sure. I think that um, at the end of the day, um, I think that the World Cup should be a World Cup, not just for eight playing nations. I think the World Cup should be fifteen teams, um, min- m- maximum or minimum. I think teams like Scotland, teams like Zimbabwe, teams like. Ireland teams like uh, uh, Oman, all those teams they need to play in a World Cup. The World Cup, the only way we're going to get game to to grow. I think that uh, if you're trying to work it in a pub, I think that's where you see kind of like a colonialism mindset um, um, creeping into the game, and you don't want that. You want the game ex- you don't you don't want the game to be just be to be exclusive for certain people. You want the game to to grow, like like teams like Argentina that play cricket. Uh, get them coming up through the ranks and then get them into international cricket. I think that's when we're going to get the game grown globally uh, by doing that. So I think that if we could get away from that colonial mindset that only a certain cricket is supposed to be played by a certain elite of class of people, I think that's where we're going to fall around. That's where we're going to be going wrong. And I think that we should throw away with the whole imperialism, colonialism in every facet of our lives um, and our livelihood. I think everybody should be included. I love to include everyone and, and and just make life inclusive for everyone and, and not and not not and not to cut off anyone because of uh, where they come from and, and, and stuff and, and, and stuff. I think that that is something that the ICC needs to take very seriously or they're going to lose a lot of people from the game. They're going to lose a lot of respect from people from the game as well. So there's something that they got to check out and they got to take seriously. Make cricket inclusive for all. Now we are seeing uh, and hearing Lot of lot of things about you know our former Indian captain Saurabh Ganguly. He wants to be in the ICC. Uh, we are hearing reports. Uh, he has not confessed. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's not actually said on record that I want to be the ICC chairman. But he's he's been uh, taken as someone who who could be one of the contenders. We are also hearing Mr. Dave Cameron, who's of course from the West Indies. He's also one of the contenders, and also one uh, one gentleman from England. He's also there. So a lot of people coming in. So what what is your take? You know. Uh, don't you think these kind of things should should be unopposed? Should be they should have an agreement in, instead of you know splitting world cricket like on based on 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 your what on your choice on your preferences? Uh, don't you think it's important that we have someone who takes cricket uh, to all countries in in the world? In, don't you think we need a, a chairman like that also? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You Neil when I said you answer your question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean uh, we got to make it inclusive. We have to. Um, um, Ganguly, uh, uh, Mr. Cameron, uh, Mr. Colin Graves, uh, right. all three worthy con- uh, uh, contenders. Um, whoever gets in, it, it's not for us to, to choose, it's the ICC. So whoever gets selects, I hope that they made fundamental changes to make cricket inclusive. And, and, and that's basically, I, I, I just think that we've got to include cricket, uh, make it in- inclusive for everyone. Um, I don't think that we need to, to split the rent of the money. Uh, Sorry, three you're- or 14. You're, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. I can't hear can you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now, now I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, cool. I think that whoever is the chairman of the of the ICC going forward, they've got to make cricket inclusive. Wish them all the luck. They need to make cricket inclusive. They've got to make cricket well loved again. And, and that is the job of the chairman of the ICC. So good luck to whoever gets in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and we and, and I'd really like the way you suggested a few things how uh, you know, it should be a there should be a price, uh, a fixed salary f- if you're playing Test cricket. I hope whosoever becomes the ICC chairman, uh, that chairman uses your cricketing, uh, you know, knowledge <laughs> to enhance the game uh, to the next level because we need to grow. We, we cricket is of course evolving with time, and we need people like you who are young and energetic. And I hope, uh, uh, you know, the IPL team, the CPL teams take your services because you are coming across as a uh, not only as a fast bowling coach, also as someone who can train a fast bowler, and you still yeah, look- I, yeah, absolutely. That's the dream. That's the big dream. Um, you know, I, I honestly believe that. You know, the whole the whole Archer tweet got out of hand. 
Um, that was not my intention. I just like to see fast bowlers putting in a hundred percent all the yes. time, you know. And you know, no disrespect to the young man, you know, that was never my intentions. But you know how people try to try to promote negativity rather than positivity. That's the world that we live in, you know. And I, I as I say, you know, I just want young fast. The amount of information that I get from young fast bowlers every day, like honestly, I get like ten messages a day from young cricketers all over the world. And I could, you, I can, I can guarantee you, I reply to every single one of them. I speak to them. I give them some of them. I give my personal number to, to just show me and ask me any personal question, uh, mentally as well. So I, I know I got a lot to offer. I love the game of cricket, and the game of cricket has given me so much, brother. And I'm just grateful to be to be remembered um, by by some of these young cricketers that I used to bowl fast. I might not be a Mark a Marshall or Cody Walsh with 500 Test wickets, but I think that my journey was was the journey that I chose, and and I'm grateful, you know, and, and thankful that. I was given the opportunity to, to play for West Indies. And however I can uh, put that on any young cricketer to get to that next level, I'm always willing to help them. And and what is special about you is you, you, you always speak your mind. And, and that's so important in, in life, in whatever you do. And uh, you always, you know, uh, had that. You know, and today also you spoke your mind. And I was really special uh, catching up with you. Uh, you know, best, you're really the best. Okay. <laughs> Really, it was really, really it's because really... Of, I, I honestly is it's because of my mother, man. Um, I, I grew up in a house of six women. Um, and my grandmother and my mother were, 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 were and my aunts were amazing women, always taught me to be honest with people, always be straightforward. You know, your honesty sometimes half the world might hate you, but the people that know life are gonna love you. So, half the world hate you and half of you, I think you're doing a good thing. <laughs> like, right. you don't want everybody to like you because if everybody like you. Then you can't get your point across. You know what I mean? Like it's good to to to, to ask questions and but also be respectful to people. So if people got this narrative that you are this big bad boy and you you you're hot headed, um, yeah, you make sure that the impression of you lasts with them forever. And that's something that I always try to do um, because you know reputation. My reputation precedes me. Uh, people always say the worst about me, but it's all right. You know what I mean? I good. But when people interact with me, I, I am a very fun-loving person. Um, I love my two kids as, as dearly. Um, I actually got to go and coach my son, hit, throw some balls at him now, um, get my arm all tired now. <laughs> but, you know, my daughter, you know, I just taught him, be anything you guys want to be. You know, just respect each and every one. Um, try not to be biased towards people religion, towards people race. Just deal with people fairly how you would like to be treated. And I think that's how we got to live as human beings and i think that's what we got to educate our children and and ourselves moving forward um, um absolutely you know you're you're really uh, not only fast with your uh, when you bowl for for your country for your club and everything but you you're really really uh, so simple in in the way you you, you think about about world at uh, worldly things lovely uh, catching up with you uh, you know i mean it was Pleasure, real pleasure having you on the show. And we will be in touch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really a pleasure. Thanks for being on SK Live. And all the best. Stay safe and train hard. And as hard as, you know, we, we can, we can, yeah. still, we can still bowl at 140. Yeah. Mr. Basu, Mr. Basu, thank you so much for giving me this platform opportunity to talk to the people on the live stream. I just want everybody to continue to believe in yourselves. Um, whoever God you pray to, um, maybe be Allah, maybe be um, your 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 um, your God, whoever you pray to, Jesus, whoever. Um, just focus on being great. Be a great human being, and and, and just don't discriminate. Um, just show love where you can, and give. I think I believe in giving. And you know, if you got one dollar, that someone asks you, and you got one dollar, give them that dollar, and I think that God will bless you. Don't only do it because you want a blessing from above, but do it because you want to. And I think that's what we. Yeah, I think that's where we we can we can move forward as a people, as a race, uh, on this con on, on this earth that we live in. Just just love each other. Just be kind, you know. Be kind, and, and also not only to be kind, but learn forgiveness as well. I think that a lot of people don't understand that you got to learn how to forgive. And I think once you forgive, you can be able to love. If you don't forgive, you can't love. Always remember that. My mom always said that to me. If you can't forgive, you can't love. So God bless you. You safe, my brother. Uh, all yeah. one love to everyone who listened this Absolutely. morning. Cheers, and, 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 and cheers and pay your regards to your mom also. Who taught you Thank you very much, brother. Thank yeah. you, man.
Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.